Hello and welcome. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done some Imperial Assault streaming. I've been on vacation for the past week, but I'm back now. We are ready to observe the Imperial Assault Skirmish Fixed Tournament. I honestly have no idea what any of these fixes are, so we're going to be learning them together as this game goes on. But we have Jake here uh, playing a... Imperial vehicle list with two uh, repulsor tanks and one ATST. So let's take a look at what's going on with those fixes. Let's see if there is an easy way to do this. Maybe just. So we have, let's see, not quite sure how to get to the fixed stuff. Oh, custom upgrades. Here we go. Looks like he is running Imperial Retrofitting, which is, let's see, how can I do this? How about put this right here? Yeah, I don't know if there's an easy way to do this, to be honest. I'll just read it. Imperial retrofitting. Reduce the deployment cost of your ATST figure by two. Figures by two, so you can bring multiple with this one upgrade. And your General Weiss figure by three. So ATSTs go from costing 14 to 12. Your ATST and General Weiss figures gain assault. You may perform multiple attacks during your activation and reinforce. At the end of the activation, if you have no block tokens, you gain one block token. Exhaust this card at the start of your activation to perform a move. So, the nice thing about that is ATSTs don't have to worry about their uh, clumsy or whatever it's called, awkward, where they can't attack adjacent figures because now they can move with Imperial Retrofitting to set up both two attacks with Assault and to avoid that awkward. So, there's still 12 points, which is a lot. Massive figures are a bit hard to use, but uh, with movement bonuses, massive figures become a lot easier to use, so I do like that. Let's see what else is going on in Jake's uh, hand. He's got M2 infantry support. Let's check that one out. Rep reduce the deployment cost of your... SC2M repulsor tanks by two each, so they go from 10 to 8. Add four health to your repulsor tank figures. So for eight costs, you're getting a 14 health figure that has uh, defensible, which means you can add plus one block or plus one evade to your defense results. So that's a pretty beefy figure. Your SC2 repulsor tank figures lose focus fire and gain targeted shot so focus fire is two actions perform two attacks targeting the same figure so those pretty restricting ability there it could be good in certain situations but most of the time it's hard to set up and you want to spread your attacks out anyway okay so they lose that and they gain targeted shot perform an attack apply plus two accuracy and pierce one to the attack results so they can't attack twice in an action. 
activation anymore. Um, and it also gets Walla Friendly SC2M Repulsor Tank is attacking. Exhaust this card to reroll up to two attack dice. So it makes their attack a lot more consistent. But they are only going to get one attack per activation. And uh, let's see. So that their best thing is that they're very tanky. And you also get Guardian and plus one accuracy. So that could be useful. So right now they have guaranteed uh, four, five. So they'll have guaranteed five accuracy with an expected six to seven accuracy, I would think. So it's not bad. Um, but again, massive figures with a speed of four, that's the bottleneck on these guys. It's going to be hard for them to make back their points with just one attack around and being massive and only having four speed. So especially with two other massive figures on the board, it's going to be hard to maneuver these guys because they cannot move through each other. So very interesting list by Jake. Um, he also has Soren who looks like Soren has a fix built into the card. Uh, bombardment. Choose a figure within three spaces of you. That figure may interrupt to perform an attack. The attack gains blast one or plus one surge. So that's an upgrade over the old bombardment where it was an adjacent figure. He also has advanced firepower, friendly droids, and vehicles within three spaces. Again, another upgrade from one. Uh, within three spaces can use your surge abilities. Uh, and those are stun, focus, and plus one. Um, so it looks like Jake is using the repulsor tank and the ATST to box Soren in. So he's very safe here. And he's going to be able to give the ATST and this tank those bonuses. Uh, when using optimal bombardment, you may choose a friendly vehicle droid and heavy weapon within three spaces instead. Um, so optimal bombardment is Soren's uh, card. I assume that it is. Uh, adjacent figures when this is an upgrade. So he's not the fix doesn't change that much to Soren. It just makes his stuff uh, affect things within three instead of one. Uh, optimal bombardment is Soren's clock card. It's two actions. Choose up to three vehicles, droids, or heavy weapons adjacent to you. Each of these figures may interrupt or perform an attack, and they all gain blast one. So it's an upgrade of that. Um, let's look at the base Soren. So the base Soren is... So he also built in a plus one accuracy pierce one, which is pretty nice. Um, other than that, oh, and he decreased the cost by one. So just some little tweaks for Soren, but having his abilities do three spaces instead of one is a big deal. Um, although not the way Jake's using him here. And then there's a regular Imperial officer who I assume has not been changed because those guys get played a lot. Same with Zillow. Looks like Jake is also running uh, Dengar. So maybe this is Jake's Dengar down here. Jake is playing very defensive with his vehicles, but it seems like he's pushed his Dengar up very aggressively. Dengar has a lot of changes. Let's look at them. Um, he has plus three accuracy up, up. That's an upgrade from plus two. 
He also has a built-in surge. Oh, it's... I can't. I can't tell if that's a built-in surge. I think it's an extra surge ability for two accuracy, which is good. It's kind of worded like it's a built-in surge. It's kind of weird. Um. He also has Bring the Pain. After the attack resolves, if it did not miss, choose another hostile figure within two spaces of the target. Apply one har harmful condition to that figure. While defending, you ignore the Pierce keyword. Um, so it makes him a little bit more defensible. And he also gets an extra green die. That's probably the biggest change. Plus two health. Same cost. So again, just some slight tweaks, but I think that does improve him a lot. It's basically like he's auto-focused. Green, green, yellow is much stronger than green, yellow. Bring the pain seems very interesting. You can dish out uh, a bunch of stuns, so he can be super annoying. Especially because he can get a stun through on a very defensible character by attacking a less defensible character nearby. So, for instance, against Han, you could attack 3PO, for instance, and try to get that kill, and then dish a stun onto Han. So that's pretty good. And finally, we have Infamous Car Owner. I think this is some kind of inside joke. I don't really get it. It's for Boba Fett. I'm not sure why he's running it. But it's in his hand. I, I don't know. So, let's see. That is a total of... 20, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, 40 points. I don't know why Dengar's in his tableau. I think maybe he's just keeping it there to examine what it looks like. So he's not running Dengar, I guess. Uh, let's look at uh, GDJT's list. I apologize I haven't been following the action, but it's important to understand what's going on in each of these guys' lists. C-3PO and R2, I don't think they've been tinkered with. At least they don't need to be. If anything, 3PO should be nerfed a bit. Um, Boba Fett. Looks like he hasn't been changed on his card, but he does have an attachment. Infamous car owner, minus one cost, which puts him at 12. When you declare an attack, use one of the following attack pools. Blue, green, green uh, with a free reroll. Or red, green with plus one accuracy and plus one damage. After the attack resolves, the target and each adjacent figure become weakened. So that's only guaranteed one, uh, two range. Uh, with a max roll of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. Uh, I guess you still get... You still get Battle Discipline, so it could get a guaranteed 3 range or a Surge for plus 2. I assume you would take the range there because Red-Green often doesn't roll a Surge. Once during your activation, you may spend 2 movement points to perform an attack without spending an action. So that gives a big benefit to his 6 speed. So that makes him basically a 4 speed figure that can attack twice. And it also reduces the cost of his command card to 1 action. His command card is Mandalorian Tactics. Let's see if we can find it. 
Uh, it's two actions, perform two attacks, apply one surge to each attack results. Instead of choosing one ability from Battle Discipline, use all of its listed abilities instead. So that, that can be very strong with blue, green, green. He could potentially do three attacks, all with a guaranteed six range, and really more like eight range. So three... Three die attacks at eight range for one action. That's pretty good. Um, actually, I might be wrong because there's nothing on his card that says he can attack multiple times in an activation. So... The way the card is worded, he could perform two attacks with Mandalorian Tactics, but he wouldn't be able to perform a third attack. Oh, no, I, I am wrong, because his spend two movement points to perform an attack does not use an action, therefore it does not count against the actions for attacks limits of one per activation. Um, we already went over Dengar's changes, and there's also IG-88, who looks like he's been untouched. So that's all the changes. Now we can finally get to the action, I guess. Um, so, yeah, Boba Fett, he, his problem is he's still only 12 health. That's not a, That's not a lot, although he does have a built-in... Block and evade, and he rolls black, which is a good defense pool, but still 12 health. Um, Dengar probably is going to be the most annoying piece of this list against these ATSTs because they don't really have a way to deal with the stun. Um, this is a huge roll. What did I miss here? Who is attacking who? That was a massive roll. Red, 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 green. So that was a tools for the job attack. It's at a red, so it would have been a red, red, green. I'm not sure who rolled it. Maybe the ATST. Another red, red, green attack against two black defense dice. So someone must be attacking a. It must be IG88 attacking the ATST. With some big, big rolls, but also big defense rolls. Five blocks against seven damage would only be two damage. And we got Hassan in here with some commentary, and thank you for joining us, Hassan. Uh, sorry, I was distracted with the uh, figuring out everybody's list. All right. So IG moves up and deals 10 damage to this ATST, but still has 5 health left. And then the uh, officer is going to go take a shot at IG, but it only does one damage. So uh, GDJT has got to figure out a way to finish off this ATST now before it can do some harm next round. Both of the bottom doors are going to open, unleashing the repulsor tanks. But unfortunately, like we talked about earlier, they can only do one attack now. So actually losing battle, what's it called? R rapid fire? Focus fire. Focus fires actually would be really good right now against these big figures like Boba Fett. 
Although Boba Fett is not in line of sight of either of them. Another weakness of massive figures. They just have a hard time getting line of sight. So instead they're going to have to move up and attack. One attack. Blue, red, yellow with blast and surge for plus two is pretty decent. So especially because all of JT's guys are tucked so close together. The ATST is going to move over and push Soren and try to take an attack against IG, I guess. It looks like there hasn't been much action. No figures have died yet. The ATST is the most wounded at 10 damage. Dengar has 4 damage on him, so he's got 6 health left. So, some important pieces are on the verge of dying, but they're still alive, and this ATST is going to get two big attacks off on IG. I still think IG is probably the best figure on the board, even with all the fixes. Just because he has access to Hunter cards and Blaze of Glory, and those are very, very strong effects. He can easily take an attack here and retreat seven spaces to support uh, the rest of his army. I actually think JT is in a very strong position here because Jake's not going to be able to do enough damage to scare off IG. Um, Soren poses the biggest threat right now, but Um, yeah, I'm not sure how he can deal nine more damage. Well, we do have a focus shot coming now because the ATST can use Soren's ability, surge abilities. In fact, with that attack, he applied, s looks like a weakened condition went on to IG. now a focused shot this shot if he applies stun that would be a pretty big deal S because IG doesn't really have a good way to deal with stun it's gonna reduce his either he's gonna have to take one attack or he's just gonna have to retreat so that's a really good stun there so maybe JT doesn't have such a strong position now because his IG is now in a very Dangerous spot a single repulsor tank shot could finish him off. So he's gonna have to retreat Which is gonna be basically a wasted uh, A wasted action activation, sorry um, His uh, alternative is he could move up and attack the ATST and sacrifice IG Either way he's got to go right now the repulsor tanks are so beefy. It's not it's really not worth taking a shot with a weakened IG. This is actually not a safe spot for the IG either because these repulsor tanks can plow right over this blocking terrain and easily take a shot. So, I think Jake might choose to get aggressive right here with this middle repulsor tank. There's really no reason not to. He's got two big targets that he wants to go for in IG and Dengar. Since Dengar hasn't gone yet, his best play would be to move the repulsor tank up and shoot Dengar right in the face. Try to kill Dengar before that focused shot comes out. Definitely the best bet for Jake here, I think. Then again, this is a very unusual list, and I really don't know how to play it optimally, so take it all my commentary with a grain of salt here. Oh, in fact, um, the Repulsor Tank 
his line of sight is not blocked by small figures, so he doesn't have to move up to shoot IG. I still think he should have shot Dengar. He's going to tap to reroll. Probably the red and the yellow. So he adds one die, so that's seven against... Sorry, five against two blocks. The evade token coming in there from 3PO. So he could have moved up one, two, three, four... Um, I don't think he could have pushed IG away from 3PO, actually. Unfortunately, that leaves IG alive with one health. And now Dengar can also move up and dish out some status effects. The really bad thing about that is if these figures get stunned, Soren cannot order them to attack. I think the main weakness of Jake's list is the limited number of attacks he gets per round because he gets basically two good attacks from the ATST, one each from the repulsor tanks, and then Soren can order an attack as well. That's five attacks. Um, on the other side, IG can typically get off one to two attacks around. Uh, Dengar's going to get one. Boba Fett's going to get one. So actually, both sides have a very limited number of attacks per round. Um, overcharged weapons is going off. When a hostile figure activates, you can interrupt to perform an attack targeting that figure. It gains pierce two. So, the repulsor tank is going to use it to attack Boba Fett? Oh, not sure what happened. Oh, Toxic Dart. It was a strain. So, overcharged weapons gets tossed. And Boba Fett's going to move up and try to do something to these repulsor tanks. Again, the big benefit of Jake's list is the meatiness of these repulsor tanks. For eight points, you're getting a 14 health figure that has defensible, so you can add an extra block token or evade token. So four, five, six, seven damage it looks like here. That's, so I stand corrected, Boba Fett there with a big seven damage attack. And since he used Mandalorian tactics, he's gonna get two more attacks. It's crazy good. So he could potentially kill this, uh, this tank in two hits and still attack the other tank. Mandalorian Tactics costing only one action becomes a very, very strong card. Uh, right up there with some of the other three-cost cards, like, uh, well, Blaze of Glory is only two cost, but just getting two extra attacks is immense value. This one does... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. So uh, with the added block, that would do six. So this repulsor tank is probably going to die. Uh, 
um, hit and run gets tossed there with Zillow, I suppose, to add a block. But he could have used defensible to add a block anyway. Actually, he could have added an evade there to subtract two damage, so. Okay, so he did add a block with defensible as well. But unfortunately, this repulsor tank gets finished off by Boba Fett, and Boba Fett remains safely tucked in that really annoying corner down there at the bottom where he's so hard to get to. Soren here can order an attack that could have blast, and he could potentially kill uh, IG with that blast. It's probably the best bet in case IG is holding on to Blaze of Glory. Although I'm not sure if JT wants to play Blaze and basically give Jake 12 victory points at the end of this round. Finishing off that Repulsor Tank is a big deal. So even though it costs 8, he still gets 10 victory points from killing it. Again, Jake messing around with the three massive figures. He does have experience playing with multiple massive figures. Jake is the guy that ran two, a two Bantha list a couple years ago. So Jake does know what he's doing with these massive figures. It's very difficult to pilot multiples, um, but if anyone can do it, it's Jake. Uh, but we are seeing that this is kind of a bad map for it because there's some really annoying corners that are just really hard for massive figures to deal with. Specifically where Boba Fett is hiding, it's really hard to get in there and get at him. Um, and this is a Soren activation, which will blast to finish off IG. And also, there will be a celebration to add four victory points to get Jake to 16. In fact, he, instead of attacking the Jawa there, he attacks IG directly. Which is interesting because he could have just attacked the Jawa to finish off IG. Very interesting. Maybe he's worried about on the land? On the Jawa? It is possible. Um, is he running on the lamb in this list? I mean, Mandalorian Tactics costs three. That's kind of expensive. No one can use on the lamb except for the... Jawa, and that's all. So yeah, I really doubt he's using on the lamp, so. He could be worried about the dodge, though. I think he maybe should have risked it, just because he potentially could have killed both the Jawa and IG. It's a 1 in 6 chance of the dodge. I think it's worth it, but um, he chooses not to, which is also fine. It would have been 1, 2, 3, 4, Four. It, it wouldn't have finished the Jawa off anyway, so it's not a big deal. Now Dengar's going to go, and this is a big activation here. Dengar can get line of sight of the ATST if he wants to. Jake did have initiative, so. There's not really a rush, I think, to move Dengar up super aggressively. 
because he potentially could get killed by an officer, although it's unlikely. Three range, one, two, three, plus he's got built in three, so that should hit. Interesting choice in targets there, though. I guess he is forcing Jake to put his other officer on the terminal, but that's not a huge deal. Um, one, two, three, four damage. It's actually not going to do enough. Well, yeah, he he can kill him actually, and then he can bring the pain onto the ATST to add a stun, and he's going to choose to do that. I'm, I think I probably would have played aggressively there, stun, tried to finish off the ATST and get a condition on the. Tank. Although the ATST is rolling two blacks, so pretty unlikely that that happens. I think JT knows he's ahead here, and he just wants to keep his big figures safe. Dengar has to do some more work in this game to make up his value. He's going to keep his guys tucked away safely. Try to finish off this tank, and then work from there, probably. He can't lose Dengar, though. That would be a massive blow. So. It's actually a very close matchup right now. Um, The ATST can get four movement points in an attack on its activation, even with the stun. Wild shot coming here from the officer, and it's going to whiff on range. Dengar has five health left, so. I don't know. He he probably could have moved up pretty safely. Um, JT is getting initiative. It's not clear what he's going to do with it. Because when you get initiative, you kind of want to have a figure in an aggressive spot already. So you can attack and retreat. Um, but if you don't have a figure in an aggressive position you have to move up an attack which leaves your guy hanging for a whole two rounds the draw was going to get dodged uh, if he would have killed that jawa it would have also denied a command card so that's a pretty big dodge there by jake Pretty sure JT should be at 13 now. He did kill. So apparently you only get 8 points from killing the tanks.
So apparently the repulsor tanks only give eight points. Um, so points getting scored by both sides with the droids. Putting Jake at 28 and JT at 17. Uh, sorry, Jake at 22 and JT at 17. In order for Jake to win, he needs 18 more points. So that means he needs to kill Boba Fett for 12, 3PO for 2, and then actually just killing Boba Fett would do it because he's going to score another droid probably. If he kills Dengar, that would be 7, so 13... So he can kill Dengar and score two droids. Or he could kill Dengar, the Jawa, and 3PO. So he has a couple different paths. Um, I think it's going to be very hard for him to kill Boba Fett. Just because that mobility makes him a nuisance that can retreat to a very safe spot. Uh, the fact that JT got the bottom is even better because that blocking terrain just kills these massive figures. Um, so, like I said, when you have initiative, you want to attack with a guy that's in an aggressive position and then move back. So, he uses his Jawa at the end of the round and moves up aggressively and then retreats. Unfortunately, he can't finish off that officer, which is crazy because it only had three health and it was taking two Jawa attacks. And it rolls a dodge and then a whiffed Jawa attack to do only two. Um... But it does retreat into a relatively safe spot next to 3PO. It's not blocking Dengar because the ATST can see over the Jawa, so its position there is not a blocking spot. But it is relatively safe because he gets the extra evade and he has um, the Jawa's take cover ability, which can trade an evade for a block. So if he rolls an extra evade, that would be helpful. The repulsor tank is going to come in and try to finish off Dengar. This is a big attack because if Dengar dies, that puts Jake with a very clear path to victory here. So it moves up one space and then uses shared experience to become focused. So this is going to be a blue, red, green, yellow rainbow attack. He needs to do 5 damage. He's going to reroll the yellow and the blue, presumably. Or maybe the yellow and the red. Definitely the yellow. So he is re-rolling the red and the yellow, and he max rolls it. Five, six, six with surge for plus two. Even with the evade, oh, so it's Dengar, so he can't convert. Man, massive roll there. That re-roll was huge, and now we can see why re-rolls are so valuable. Just a massive, massive reroll there. 
Dengar gets finished off before he can activate, so. <sighs> wow. That really changes the equation here for JT, and he finds himself way on the back foot. He's going to have to move up his Boba Fett really aggressively. At this point, it's Boba Fett either needs to get some kills um, and soak some damage, or the game is over. Huge attack here. Green, 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 blue with a very good... Uh, very good roll. Five and a surge would be seven. Big roll there. And Boba Fett's going to get a free attack. He's probably going to retreat, although at this point, Boba Fett's probably not going to die. He might as well retreat, I guess. If I was JT, maybe I would have moved up and tried to attack Soren, although it's kind of far. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he could have, but he wouldn't have gotten a free attack off. I think JT's probably not playing aggressively enough with his Boba, or wasn't earlier in the game, because Boba is very defensible, and you can soak up some attacks and then retreat with him, to protect your other important units like IG and Dengar, who don't have the same defensive abilities. IG's pretty good on defense, but not quite as good as Boba Fett. And then this free attack is going to use Element of Surprise. So this is going to be 5. Five damage. So probably a Zillo discard. It's only five because the tank has defensible, so I can add an evade. And assassinate's gonna come out to just finish it off. You know the repulsor tank actually does not block line of sight to the ATST. So if JT wanted to, instead of taking two ta two shots at the repulsor tank there, he could have taken two shots at the ATST instead. I think that's a much juicier target, especially because Jake now can remove the stun, move it up with basically nothing threatening it. Uh and then start the next round with initiative. I think it would have been a much better play there, especially with assassinate in hand, to try to finish off that ATST. Instead, uh, the repulsor tank is actually still alive somehow. I'm not sure how. Five, eight. Should have been eight damage. Seven damage. So, actually, it's only. I'm not sure how it's still alive, to be honest. I think it should have been 7 damage. Did it only have 6 on it before? Wow, what a whiff. Man, with with Element of Surprise and Assassinate, he definitely should have gone for the ATSD. It's possible that he doesn't know that he had Line of Sight there, because with massive figures, it's kind of confusing. But other figures don't block Line of Sight to your massive figures, even other massive figures. So he definitely could have finished off that ATST before. And now Jake's probably licking his chops because this ATST is going to move up and do a lot of work. All Jake needs to do to win is kill the Jawa and uh, 3PO. He doesn't have to touch Boba Fett at all. And this game will be over probably at the start of the next round. Uh, he's choosing to attack 3PO. He doesn't get Bla uh, Soren's surge abilities this time. Uh, 
Um, but finishing 3PO off before he could focus the Jawa is probably more important than killing the Jawa. Uh, but there is the risk of a dodge since 3PO has cower. One, two, three, four, five range. So he actually only hits, let's see, does he miss on range? Nope, he hits the range. ATSDs have guaranteed five. Um, one, two, three, four damage and a surge. So this would be six. So he needs the actually. This surge is just for Pierce. Three PO needs to roll a dodge to live, and it's a blank. And the reroll evade, so that will finish him off. It does block the blast too, which is not insignificant. But losing three PO is a big deal there. Um, another reroll coming out, I think, for some reason. I don't, I'm not sure. Not the best roll there from the ATST, but it was enough to do uh, just enough damage. So two more points for Jake, and he is just inching closer to that winning score of 40. He's going to get six from the droid at the end of the round, which will put him at 35. Soren's going to come order an attack against the Jawa, which will potentially give him three more to put him at 38. And then all he has to do is uh, make sure his other droid gets there. Wow, that's a much better roll than the last one. Only a dodge would save this Jawa. And another three points for Jake. So actually that puts Jake at 34. So yes, the game will be over now because the droid scores six. I miscounted somehow. I, I thought that all he had to do was kill the Jawa and, and 3PO. So that'll do it. So again, I think not going for the ATST there was the just a big killer. The ATST ended up finishing off both 3PO and Jawa, the Jawa. Again, you don't want your Boba Fett ending the game with zero damage. That means he didn't distract your opponent enough. Yes, you can play him very safely. Like he, he's untouchable where he's at, but it just makes it an easy choice for your opponent to finish off IG. Um, but man, the way that Jake handled these massive figures is just masterful. Very good game there by Jake. Um, I think both players played really well, actually. I, I don't think there was a lot of misplay. Um, yeah, and Jake takes it home with that six points from the droid. So that's our first taste of the skirmish fix tournament um i'll try to bring some more this week if i have time uh but until then thank you all for watching uh feel free to uh subscribe to the twitch channel or check out my youtube channel uh, i also have a patreon if you like this kind of content and want to support me it's uh, patreon.com slash brett p kelly um, I haven't set up any exclusive content for patrons yet, but that might be something coming in the future. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.